Hey folks, I'm back again with Terrapin the Turtle Archaeologist. And we are going back up to Mine Town to deal with all the stuff we're carrying around. So that's fun. Um, I'm still waiting on the day when inventory management is no longer an issue. Um, I'm hoping to go all the way down to Mine's End to get the Lux Stone. Um, but after that, I'll certainly be doing Sokoban. And I'm seriously considering get, getting the Tool Prize in hopes of a bag of holding. Especially since I already have Reflection, so one of the amulets would be useless. And armor is always sketchy for turtles because the Helm of Speed is often rigid and can't be worn. Plus I already have Gauntlets of Protection, so that prize would also be useless. <sighs> um, in positive news... I have a tin of chameleon meat now, so I can polymorph into something at will. That's exciting. Um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> One thing I'm also curious about is where the heck I put my hammer. I think it might be on the Ford, the level like one of the top dungeon levels near the uh, Goblin Town. Forge, but I'm not certain. So I hope I didn't lose it. I mean, I can I guess I can always look back through videos or something. Eh. Cursed bolts. I think I'll sell them. By the time I can easily uncurse stuff, I probably won't care too much about those mithril things. Oh, this is interesting. So we've got ourselves a cursed Atlas, but it's 18 gold, so it's plus two which is actually better than what I'm currently have. Huh. I guess I'm keeping that. Um, this is just a normal plus zero silver Atlas. I think I'll sell it. You can't forge anything with an Atlas, and I can always make a better silver Atlas than this one, so. Hmm. Okay, for the rest of the price IDing, I think I might skip it. Alright, price IDing is finished. Uh, main highlights are we have a stack of 5 plus 3 daggers, which hopefully I can make into some nicely enchanted spears or something. Um, I mean, I could, but I like them to be a nice material, so I'll need to hold out for some good arrows. Also, I've discovered two more 300 Zerkman scrolls, so I'm up to 3 out of the 5 identified. Um, Evil Act is a new scroll, the Scroll of Magic Detection, which has um, a base price of 300 as well. And it's pretty awesome because um, it identifies magical items like potions and scrolls. So it's like, if it's blessed, it's significantly better than a blessed scroll of Identify. I mean, Bless Scrolls of Identify still can do things that Magic Detection doesn't. Because Magic Detection only identifies magical properties and not like charges or rust proofing status or stuff like that. But it does basically identify all you need to know about scrolls and potions. Um, and it does it for the, anything on the level, not just some number of items in your inventory. Oh, Piranha. Still scary. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, silver flail's cool. I can use that to make a silver atlas. Hopefully combine it with some nice spear. Um, like with magical property. Um, 
Even though spears are kind of my go-to ranged weapon at this point, because they just do better damage. Um, an acolyte. Oh, I forgot. I should have dropped some stuff back. Well, I'll get to that. Um, oh, that's a nymph. Uh oh. Uh, okay. Oh, that is no longer where my stat spears are. When it does get moved. Wait, is it over water now, the nymph? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Nymph down. Actually, I don't need these. I'll keep one of the daggers just so I know what uncursed plus zero items look like, but... Um... I don't need a lot of unremarkable daggers. Okay, and I have, right, that's one reason to quiver the spears when I throw them, otherwise they'll merge with my wielded weapon instead when I pick them up, which is a pain. I guess I could just wield them all and then throw them from my wielded hand when I felt like it. I don't think there'd be any, well, the problem with that is... I have to be careful not to throw all of them by accident, but other than that, there wouldn't be any serious issues, I guess. Anyway. Okay, I do need to drop stuff I don't need here. So that's most of my weapons. Um, okay, 150 weight. Don't need this. Don't need these weapons either. Probably don't need multiple of this potion, whatever it is. Um, oh, and I have a lot of food rations too. Okay, that's good. Um, and just so I don't forget that I left stuff here. Name it. And. We're off again. Oh, I should have actually done something with that cool. It occurred to me that my 200 Zork Midwing could be free action. I mean, it's unlikely, but it's certainly possible. And if it is, I would very much like to know so I can wear it all the time. Um, and ghouls have a paralyzing attack, so I could have let it hit me until it either paralyzed me or failed to. And I would have known whether it was free action. But, oh well. Um... Another sewer level, um, so we're still not quite down to Mine's End yet. I don't know how many levels it usually is down, but it feels like this is maybe a little deeper than normal. Four levels below Mine Town and we haven't reached Mine's End yet. I don't know. I often don't do Mine's End until like after I complete Sokoban, for no particular reason. It's probably not good strategy. Anyway, um, but it means that I'm not always properly, like, prepared or aware of what's going on. <laughs> um, because normally I just blow through it, because I'm super overleveled. And I don't have to think about any difficulties I might encounter. Okay, we have a Yeti. Normally I'd be super pumped about eating this for cold resistance. Um, but I'm already totally cold resistant. Okay, I'm just going to cover these spears there. Uh, so I'm just going to eat it for nutri nutrition, I suppose. Because I do keep getting hungry. I'm wearing two rings and an amulet. So, 
I'm flying proves its use um, for one of the first times, other than not having to worry about carefully maneuvering around water. Which is to say that when you're flying, you don't get hit by landmines. You could still set them off somehow, which is a real pain in like Ludios, because the vault there is just riddled with landmines. Um, and they blow gold everywhere when they explode. So, that's a pain. Um, anyway. Nope. Oh, and that was worthless. No, I didn't want to drop the leash. I want to drop that. Okay. Uh, rock trap. There's our intrinsic searching, which we got at level 10. Did not work out so well with the boulder trap. Whatever. Um, at least this level's lit. Got a level lit level. Uh, so there's going to be a new version of Evil Hack released super soon. Possibly it will have been released by the time this video is done. Um, and I'm quite excited because, you know, it's always fun to have new stuff going on. Um, in particular, there's going to be a new race, the Drow. And they will be able to see in the dark, which is super awesome. Very excited for that. Because, of course, it means that you don't have to worry about light all the time. Well, you do, because light makes you vulnerable as a drow. But um, at least exploring levels that are dark will no longer be, you know, make me want to stab my eyeballs out. And it looks like we've got a gnome riding something, a forest centaur, so that could be a bit dangerous. Uh, nope, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, monsters riding other monsters is always a crapshoot, because it depends so heavily on which monsters they are, what gear they have, etc. Um, in that case, it obviously was not an issue. But like, sometimes you'll end up with the rider having reflection, and then it protects the ridey as well, even though that's not how it works when you're riding a monster. Annoying, annoyingly. Um, or sometimes you'll just have a rider with a lot of AC, which will also protect the ridey. Because unlike monsters, you never hit the steed when you're attacking a monster riding another monster. Although other monsters attacking can hit the steed of another monster. If I had to gloss it, I'd say that you have a certain amount of honor that means that you don't attack a monster that's merely carrying another monster around. But then again, you did just like walk into a dungeon and start murdering things, so I feel like that might be a little unlikely. Alrighty, so we have the, I forget what it's called, like the catacombs or something. This kind of sucks, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there's like vampires on the level. There's a lot of zombies, which I'm not really totally equipped to deal with yet. I think I might tin them just so I, I don't have to worry about them. There are a lot of spell books, which is always nice. Um, as I believe I've said before, arcs make pretty decent casters. So I am kind of pumped for that. And I guess we are getting more sleep resistance from this elf zombie. That's always a fun time. Um, I guess we can drop everything but the elf tin. I am probably going to be having to take multiple trips up and down because spellbooks are heavy. Even though on average they're a bit lighter than in vanilla, they're still pretty heavy. So, gotta watch out for that. Um, I guess while we're here... Oh, and I no longer have a dagger. I keep dropping all my daggers so I can't properly eat from my tins. 
I should really just plus my tinning kit. I'm gonna have to do it eventually. I don't know. Um, well, either way, it's not like 8% sleep resistance is gonna make or break my game. No jinx. Um, of course, another annoying thing about this level is just it's so maze like. It's never fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm mostly worried about the vampires, really. We found our first teleport trap, it will not be the last. All the gray stones are on the teleport traps. It's super annoying. Heck, I guess I'll carry the tin around. I don't really need to, I'm just tinning them so that I don't... Uh, so that they don't revive. I don't really need the food. Um, but... Oh, shoot. That's, that's a scary mummy. Um, I should, yeah, take it down from here. I still cannot get over the fact that giant mummies are so fast. Et and mummies, luckily, are not. But... Oh. Oh. <laughs> They're faster than I am. Well, same speed as I am on average, but in practice, probably a little bit faster. Like, more likely to get a hit on me than I am to run away. Uh, I don't have any silver on me. I'm just gonna hope that my MC3 and Tripression will get me through this. Yes, it will. Lovely. Uh, hopefully the other... So I think there's two guaranteed vampires on this level. Random va vampires. Um, so... I merely hope that the other vampire is just a plain old normal, non-noble vampire. That will be easier to dispatch. Okay, we got ourselves a solid hollow gems. I can probably buy another round of protection with that. Oh, <laughs> I even saw the sleep trap before I stepped in it, but I didn't have enough time to stop myself. And right after I said sleep resistance wasn't important. Well, I did survive, so maybe I was right. I'm not sure what the deal is with the gems. Ooh, it's always good to have another one of teleportation, of course. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with the gems, if they're like guaranteed or how that works. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, it looks like the other vampire is over here, in bat form. That is one nice thing, is vampires usually hang out in alternate, less dangerous forms. Um, unless you kill them. So it, you can to some extent avoid them. Although, for instance, if you don't have poison resistance, then even a vampire bat is pretty scary. I do, though, so that's not a worry. Okay, that's two spots the load, no, oh, not the load, the luck stone could have been. Which leaves the room on the other side of the map. So I have to go all the way back there. Um, yeah, one thing you might be noticing is when I'm stuck in a web, I can't fly. Which makes sense, but it can be kind of dangerous. It means that you can like fall into water or lava if you get webbed over them, which, for obvious reasons, does not end well for you usually. Ooh, an Elven Lord. Oh, shit. <laughs> I 
thought this would be a slightly easier kill than that. Speed 12. I should be able to outrun him eventually. And then I can maybe switch to my Iron Aquas. I still have my spears. Well, they worked. Um, they have an elven longsword, which is neat, I guess. Might use that. Ooh, and another scare monster scroll. Please don't turn to dust. Please don't turn to blast dust. Yes. Oh, no, it's not scare monster. It's the one that I forgot to unname scare monster. It's just a normal 100. Oh, well. 100 something. Um, okay. I might actually name Sting now, because... So I have a can of grease, you may recall. I currently have no helm to apply it to, which is a real shame. Also 8% sleep resistance. Um, so I was hoping like the Elven Lord might have an uh, elven helm arm, but if not, maybe I can summon an elf. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Oh well. Um, so when you name Stinger or Chris, there's a chance that elves will come to protest your cultural appropriation, um, but it's not guaranteed. So, I mean, obviously in some games you don't want the elves to show up because you don't want to fight them. But I think most of the time when you're naming Sting, you do want them to show up because if you weren't able to fight the elves, you wouldn't be naming Sting in the first place. And if you are able to fight them, then there are a bunch of positives because they can have pretty neat gear and their corpses are just so, so tasty. Um, so, usually a disappointment when they don't show up. At least for me. Or can we break through the walls? I can't remember. Oh, you can. That's nice. I guess I'll be doing some of that then. Just a 1d6 attack, doesn't bother me. Mummies really like gems. I find that odd since they're not very intelligent. I guess it's like a magpie or something. Okay, Guardian Naga Hatchlings do not have a paralysis bite, which overall is probably a good thing, but does mean I cannot test my 200 Zorpid ring with it. Um, got a hiding jumping spider. Is it sitting on like a web with loot? Yes, it is. I mean, it's probably a web. Okay, this is the other vampire. I'm gonna maybe try not engaging. It might be too fast to avoid. The issue isn't necessarily the vampire bat itself. As you see, it's not really out damaging my regeneration, but um, if I get trapped between it and another monster, I might not be able to escape. <sighs> okay, you asked for it, little vampire. Let's hope it's a little vampire. No, it is not. Please tell me the vampires don't follow you upstairs. They do. Okay, that's good to know. Am I on the... I'm not on the downstairs anymore. Um, well, at least here I'm in the position to zap with... To get a double zap with wands. Ooh, there goes one level. Um, 
Oh, there goes one wand. I don't know if light would help. Uh oh, there goes my level again. Um, 14 health. That's 78 over 14. Not enough to pray. So it only has time for one attack. Wait, are they slower than me? That can't possibly be correct. I thought they were fast. Yeah, they speed 18. Okay, it's just bad luck that it fell so far behind. It will not remain so. But yeah, I'm hoping that I can get it to attack me once more. Oh, I was down to 12 health somehow. Uh, now I have, but I regenerated hit point. Okay, I'm at 6. I think I can pray now. Yes, back to full health. Of course, the vampire does regenerate, and now I'm... I did lose a level, so that sucks. Um, but, hey, protection will be cheaper, I guess. Ooh, a steel stout, stout spear. If this is, like, not trash, I might consider using it. Um, as my main weapon, just so that I can have all my mithril spears in one place for convenience. I don't know. I'll have to consider it, because of course it does mean that I'm using an inferior weapon, because mithril's better. I don't know. Um, well, I do have a rune dagger now, so I can eat that elf corpse at least. Uh, I don't think it's cursed, and I have 80 Zorkmid scrolls, so... Okay, tin of elf meat. Using sting to eat it. That's just messed up. <laughs> um, okay, I'm very... I'm, Pretty close to full sleep resistance, which is nice. Um, I do want to get crowned at some point. Uh, you see a lot of people, I think especially in Evil Hack, that want to get crowned early for their resistances. Because unlike in vanilla, there's literally no way for you to... Um, to like instantly get up to full fire resistance. Like in vanilla, you can always just roll the dice on a red mole or whatever, and there's a chance that you will be fully fire resistant by like turn 20. Um, that just doesn't happen in vanilla uh, or in evil hack. So the guaranteed resistances you get from crowning are a bit better. Plus, the invisible is permanent. It's the only way to get permanency invisible, and you have a chance of getting sickness resistance, which, you know, obviously is amazing. Um, especially as a turtle, because especially as a lawful turtle, because there's no other way that I can get sickness resistance. Um, so, yeah, I think neck or it might be the grim tooth grant sickness resistance. I guess I could wield that if I found it. But, you know, obviously not worth, like, a wish. And I'm not certain it does grant sickness resistance. Um, next version... I feel like there's something that grants sleep, uh, sickness resistance. But I can't remember what it is. Um, it still might not be total wearable. <sighs> Thankfully I didn't get the level teleport trap. I kind of forgot that that was there, honestly. Um, I have a lock stone now, so that's exciting. Um, let's blow this pop stand. After picking up 
that last scroll, of course. Um, and that is whole level sub, uh, explored. So, yeah. Um, I have myself a whole lot of gems. Some other valuable stuff. So. I'm excited about that. Oh, and I'm missing a spear. When did that happen? Oh, now I gotta go find it. Damn. Um, this is such a pain. Is it over this? Yeah, okay. At least it's visible. I guess I'll walk over burdened. Most of the threats are gone now. Work monies do not count as threats. And we're giant mosquitoes. Or geckos. Wow, it's like the game's trying to throw me. Easy. Softballs, that's the word. Um, Okay, I wouldn't say I deserve them after the game I've been having, because like, I'd say the vast majority of problems I've run to have been entirely my fault, but nonetheless, I'm happy. I'm really hoping the zombie doesn't get moves on me, that's all I really want to avoid. Okay, yeah, I'm never coming back. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think of something that would cause me to come back there, and I can't think of anything. The only thing that might vaguely be useful is, like, searching for poly... Ooh. Um, is looking for poly traps, I guess? Uh, but... I'm sure I'll find them somewhere else. That's what automatic searching is for. Let's take out our luck stone. Oh, and make sure you identify it. Um, okay. And this level no longer is puds. That matter, this level no longer is a stash. Rejoice, I have remembered to remove some level annotations. That is a rare, rare thing to happen. You can actually see I forgot to remove the level annotation for this vault. Um, okay. Ooh, a uh, one that's a uh, green colon. It's going to be a lizard, not a gecko. Geckos are not that high level. I finally have a lizard corpse. This is very exciting. Ooh, and the silver foil is blessed, which means it might be, like, decent. I probably should be a bit more careful about just attacking nymphs. In this case, it was fine, I'm sure, but... Because um, they usually are, like, always hostile to players, right? So, one time I attacked one from afar, and it turned out that it was a poly-peaceful monster. So... My god got a little mad. Um, let's just eat this... What should we eat? I guess the giant tin. Finally over 1850, I think that's a good thing. I mean, more strength is always a good thing, but I think that means I do more damage or something. I also have all these partly eaten things I should probably do something about. Um, and we'll move Sting so we can pick up our Matic later, no problems. Okay, another price ID run. I think I will also skip this one. 
um, even though I think there might be a few less things that I'm having to ID. So that's cool. Anyway, see you on the other side. Okay, we are done with price ID. And we found, made some interesting discoveries. First off, um, our steel stout spear that I was considering wielding is actually plus two. Did not see that coming. Um, so yeah, I'm totally wielding that. It's better and it's more convenient and just awesome altogether. Oh, I actually forgot to price ID some things. Oops. Anyway, um, yeah, we seem to be getting a lot of enchanted stuff, so that's very cool. Um, we've got some plus two steel arrows, which, I don't know, I could maybe consider forging into five dwarvish spears, but they wouldn't be significantly better damage-wise. They'd be, do like one more damage than my mithril ones. Accuracy doesn't matter too much since I'm so skilled with them, and they'd be heavier, so I don't think that's worth it. But I'll keep them around. Um, okay. Uh, forgot. Yeah, forgot to ID these. 188, I think, is normal. Um, what's 188 times two? Uh, 376. Oh, that doesn't seem normal to me. Um, first I should sell some gems. Uh, let's start with diamonds, I guess. Okay, he only has 1,800 gold left. What gems do I have to uh, backpack problem this? Oh, I have mithril sling, sling bullets. How much are those worth? 250, okay. Less valuable than I expected, honestly. Um, okay, amethysts are 300 each, emeralds are 1250 each, yep, um, rubies are 1750 each, and topaz are 450 each. Okay, so ruby is 1750, and then I can get yeah, I think ruby plus mithril stones is the best way to squeeze the shopkeeper for gold. Um, let's see, 25, so four mithril stones. How much gold did he offer? Oh, I think it's like hyphened out of a prompt. Oh, there it is, no, 1842. Okay, so yeah, I'll drop four mithril stones. Um, and thus I only miss out on eight gold pieces worth of stuff. And even luckier, I am, I mean, this isn't really a big deal because I could totally get five gold from somewhere. But since I got level drained, I have. I, if I had not been level drained, I would not quite be able to afford protection. Although I'd miss it only by four gold, five gold pieces, so like I just like go off and find a dwarvish spear to sell or something. Actually, I don't think that would recover it, but you get the point. Um, so a minor silver lining. Love being rewarded. Um, okay, I think we're good here. Ooh. Loving these spears. Never gonna get tired of saying that. Um. Oh, I'm wearing a shield of reflection, that would totally do it. I was confused at why my success rate was so bad. 
Hi. Uh, I'm going to read all these spell books I have. But I wanted to lock the room up. Um, oh, I don't really have inventory for them at the moment. Oh, I don't have my bag in hand either. Uh, let's see, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. Nope. Absolutely keeping the long sword out. Um, okay, and then other spell books. Cool. Uh, level 1s I can definitely read fine. So with level 10, I have... So the formula is half your experience level plus your intelligence, which for me is 5 plus 17 is 22. Then plus 4 brings me to 26, minus 2 times the spellbook level. Um, and then roll a d20, and if it's greater than that, then you fail to read the spellbook. So basically, if it's at least 20, then you're guaranteed to read it successfully. Um, so my total is half my experience level is 5, plus my intelligence 17 is 22, plus 4 is 26. So I can read up to level 3 spellbooks successfully, and luckily enough, that's all the spellbooks I have. So yeah, I'm totally reading all of them. Healing, awesome. Force Bolt, nice utility spell. Identify, great, great, great. Um, magic Missile, also awesome. This, I would say, is a strong, strong argument in favor of not wielding my polished shields. Because all these attack spells are like... Like, Magic Missile is great for attack, healing is great for not, you know, healing. ID obviously doesn't matter if I'm wearing the shield normally, because I can just take it off to cast ID. But, uh... Okay, um, yeah, I still have very little chance of casting ID at the moment. I'd really like to get a low-level divination spell then, because um, I can get up to expert in divination. Skilled should be plenty for me to cast ID with very little fail. Probably zero, but it's really inefficient to train my divination skill with the actual ID spell because I won't be casting it successfully much. Well still, that was like, if you wanted me, uh, did I miss hit number lock it? What the hell? Oh, is yeah, that was it. <laughs> I kept on trying to apply my spell book because my letters switched around. The dangers of messing with inventory letters. Oh, and now I messed up with my lock. Okay, there we are. <laughs> um, crisis averted. Okay. Test out this rune sword. Okay, well, it took me two hits to kill the piranha, which does seem to suggest a nice weapon, but I'm not getting any magical attack prompts. Of course, it could be another magical property. Yeah, they're level five, they should have a decent amount of hit points. Well, it's not ESP because I can't see the dwarves and I couldn't see the um, piranhas when they were underwater. Uh, it seems likely given that I wasn't, I don't think piranhas have any resistances. Um, yeah, has no resistances. In the next version, being in water will protect you from fire and acid, I think. But currently, you'd still get burned. Um, and actually, I think there's only a year in the water, not if the enemy is. I think. Anyway, no, that's not the case. No, it is if the enemy's in the water, which obviously makes sense. Well, I could see it either way. 
Maybe you could like stab a flaming spear in from the surface of the water and cut an enemy before it extinguishes the fire or something. But regardless, that's not how it works. Um, and there's no such mechanic at all in the current version. So if it had been a, uh, if the elven longsword had been venom or fire or shock or poison, or, um, then it would have given me a message. That means that leaves, so it's not ESP either. Uh, that leaves, let's see, hunger and fumbling, which should be sad. Given that it's plus five, also seems unlikely that it would get it, have a detrimental brand. Um, assuming it is plus five. I cannot wait to be able to cast ID. Okay, I do have a bunch of crap here, including, hopefully, yes, my hammer. And clerical staff. Um, is there anything else that I really want on me? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I will annotate this level with... So if I ever need forging fodder, I know where to find it. Um, okay, we're finally off to Sokoban to finish that shtick. This is exciting. Soon our inventory management woes will be lessened. Also, because of all the spells I found, I feel like that clarifies my Sokoban prize choice. Because um, even if the amulet's reflection, I would still consider that a win, because I wouldn't have to be wearing the shield for reflection anymore. At least in the short term. Um, and that would free me up to cast some spells that could make my life much safer. Um, so, sure, let's take another sphere with us. Oh, and Dwarvish soldiers follow you. I feel like I vaguely knew that. Um, all I really need now is a good hat. You never have too many hats. The last good turtle game I was playing, I was just drowning in hats. I had like three different plus three elven helms by the time I was on D level 10. Um, there is that zoo with the elvish royal. Elven King, I think. Um, he probably is wearing a hat. Um, and as they say, on I easy lies the head that wears the hat. I'm sure that's a popular saying, right? Um, so I might actually pop down there before doing Sokoban. I will have to sneak past that hell giant shaman, which can still easily kill me. Although with my spears, I might be able to take it down from range. I think paralysis is a touch spell. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten paralyzed at range. So that could be doable. On the other hand, if I wait until Sokoban's over and I get a magic resistance amulet, then paralysis is much less of a concern because magic resistance will reduce the cast paralysis spell to just one turn. I'm a hungry, hungry turtle. Okay, um, well, either way, I'm stopping by the Sokoban upstairs just to drop stuff off. I mean, it occurred to me I could have gone to the D level 2 and 3 general stores and sold some gems and got more money and paid for protection. I don't know. I mean, I have five points of protection. Getting point six through nine is not like a serious concern for me, I guess. Especially as a turtle, I'm already ahead of the AC curve. I don't know. And at some point, hopefully I'll get some access to drain life and be able to drain myself down to level one and buy just oodles of protection cheaply. I guess I'll drop the mystery longsword. I don't 
really need to know what it is until and if I unrestrict that skill. Um, and I will keep Sting on me because uh, I need something to open tins. You can cut me out of webs. All around a decent thing to have on you. Oh, and the steel atlas, maybe? Nah. Oh, I don't need this name either. Apparently, I did it at some point. Didn't notice that. Okay, um. No scare monster scrolls. Sad. Uh, these could be teleport. It's a pretty common 100 darkman scroll. Speaking of which, okay. There's the Fubi ones too. Wait, why are there two pi? Oh, because they don't always merge when they're banned. Anyway, um, spell books, of course. Very heavy. Okay, I'm unencumbered. Let's take out a bit more. Ooh, two potions of gain foo. Hmm. If it is gain level, I would rather restore my last level first. The gain ability, that is tempting. Hmm. I will think about it. Uh See if we can face this hill giant. Alrighty. Three hit KO. Another lizard, even. Everything's coming up, Terrapin. Ten points worth of strength. More sacrifices. Object detection, which is whatever, but cool, I guess. Um, I don't know if I mentioned. I think I might have. Maybe I didn't. So last time, the time before, sometime, I was griping about the fact that Forges stop thrown items from going further, like sinks, and that I thought it was a bug. It's not a bug. It is explicitly written in the code that forges will stop thrown items from going further. Mind you, I think this is kind of weird. I don't know why it's the case, but it is meant to be the case, so... Yeah. This knoll is pathing really weirdly. But at the end of the day, all leads road to the sacrificial altar. Ooh, a mithril morning star. That's very solid. Um, I can get a mithril spiked barding out of that. So if I ever end up with a pet, I can be ridden. Except not by me. Turtles can't ride things. But uh, I can still get a pet. That um, and give it a barding, which would be nice. Um, a spiked barding would prevent it from getting digested, which is a real concern. Because um, dragons all have digestion attacks, and of course they show up a fair bit. This is peaceful, right? Yeah, it is. I have enough gems, I might actually toss toss a gem to the unicorn for some luck. I don't know if I'll be able to get
get it in line of fire since I'm not invisible. Is this worth a shot? Uh, do I have my gems? I do. Okay, and Topaz was the like not very valuable one. No, it was Amber. No, <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's the one. You can turn booze into fruit, fruit juice with it, but so what? Um, yeah, I don't think I can corner the unicorn. Damn. Just not fast enough. Uh, oh well. Doesn't mean I can't keep sacrificing. Maybe one day this knoll will come after me. Will it? No, I'm over here, you idiot. <sighs> I should destroy this zombie, though. If I'm going to be on this level at all, which I will be because it has an altar. I'd like it to be a zombie-free zone. Um, okay. And the reason I came down here was largely... That. Is there any other reason I came down here? No. No, there is not. Ah, giant beetles, my favorite sacrifice. Um, they're large, so they always drop corpses, but their corpses only weigh 10 units, so they're really easy to carry around. Convenient for all your sacrifice needs. Plus, even though they're like not really dangerous. They still have a decent difficulty, which means they'll give you luck. Um, many sacrifice. So yeah, I have a chest now that I can stick my stash in. Oh, and another Etten? Zombie. Well, probably the same one that I've seen before. Just risen again. I don't know, maybe I should turn it. It's a pretty dangerous... Oh, 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 oh! Enchanted ammo, enchanted ammo. Very, very exciting. Fire is... Not the best, best choice, but it's very solid. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna Timmy Atten. They're pretty scary, hard to kill. Okay, let's see what our crossbow bolts do. Um, Alright, okay, this is annoying. This one crossbow bolt is quite possibly fire, but for some reason it didn't get ID'd with the rest because it was like. I didn't see it get fired at the same time or something. Anyway, um. Yeah, IDing ammo, it's a hard problem. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's buggy, I'd just say there's no good way to elegantly do it. So sometimes you end up with stacks of darts where you... Yeah, or stacks of other ammo, not just darts where... You know it's all magical, but you can't really prove it. If that makes sense. Um, I don't... So... What I'd like to do with these fire things is make a couple mithril stat spears of fire. Um, plus three, I can even do with my enchanted daggers. I don't think I have the mithril ammo to do that right now. I could maybe do. I could do steel stat spears of fire, which is a solid choice as well. But. I would really like the best, you know? I don't know. Um, I'll think on that. Maybe I should check out my random crap once more. Hmm. 
There were those four mythical crossbow bolts that I sold, but I can't use those to make stout spears anyway, so no regrets there. Keep the amethyst stones on me for possible unicorns in Sokoban. I'll actually be able to corner them here. Oh, and I should adjust my can of grease to its normal area now that I have one. Um, Yeah, I don't have any good mithril forging fodder. Dang. Mm, and so, like, I would much prefer a mithril stat spear fire to a silver one because fire is not useful against demons. I guess it would be useful against vampires, but. So vampires are supposedly vulnerable to fire, but object properties currently don't actually do that extra damage. So make of that what you will. Um, but it does mean that fire isn't actually that much better. It, it's well, straight up not better against vampires than a frost weapon is. I don't think any vampires are resistant to cold. Not even Vlad, question mark. Um, and of course, frost is much better against all sorts of demons. Um, Mithril um, is the better material choice for everything except demons, which is where fire is more likely to be useful. Um, I'm going to keep these tripe rations around after that vampire. Don't want to lose more levels. Um, wow, I have a lot of stuff. Carry the earth scroll around for now because whatever scroll is teleport won't be useful in Sokoban anyway. Which is where I'll be for the foreseeable. Here's a question. I'm wondering. So, pets will eat eucalyptus leaves when they're sick. This is not related to anything. I just saw the eucalyptus leaf in my inventory and I started off on this tangent. Um, I'm not sure what exactly makes them eat them, whether they are like classified as treats when an animal is sick, or whether there's some specific thing that says if you're sick, eat a eucalyptus leaf, even though it's not necessarily a treat or anything you'd normally eat. Um, all this is to say, I wonder if you could like make some monster sick, like even a humanoid monster. If you could make it sick, could you then toss it a eucalyptus leaf to tame it? <laughs> I don't know, does the taming code consider treats, or does it consider specific kinds of food? I have a lot of questions. It probably doesn't work. That's the most likely answer. But that would be really funny if it did. Great, I have a bag of tricks. I've forgotten about that. Okay, final pass. One of these food, one of these ones. 
Don't need these tools. Okay, and anything we really want in the chest. Guess we can take a paralysis potion and an uncursed object detection for Sokoban 4. It's good enough for me. Okay, and final. Oh, did I lock the chest? No, I did not. Oops. Okay, hopefully that will keep it safe. Unfortunately, this is one of the Sokoban ones where you don't have an extra boulder. So. I can't stick one over the chest to keep it safe. Safer, anyway. <sighs> okay, I think I'll need to cheat for this. Here, I think I'm good. Actually, I might be able to remember this. Because then it's, it's that way, that this way. Go down there, doot, doot. Okay, well, good news is I didn't screw up. Bad news is I totally would have screwed it up. Um, but no harm, no foul. I think it should be decently simple from here. We just those first couple boulders that are scary. I think I did this somewhat inefficiently. I don't recall normally having to make that long loop. But still totally solvable. Ooh, and I've gotten to Constitution, Constitution 18 through exercise. It's exciting. Um, I guess I'm likely to have more health when I level re-level up back to level 11. Mm, ooh, elf zombie. I'm sure it's inviting bad karma. I will once again use Sting to eat the corpse. <gasps> polymorph! Oh, I know it's Polymorph. I didn't name it. Um, that's lovely since I have poly control. I do have this chameleon meat on me, so I can always polymorph if I need to, but having more access to it is always nice. Oh, speaking of nothing in particular. I should also switch to magical breathing because I don't need flying anywhere currently. Um, okay, finally eating um, the elf like we promised. It's up to what, 93? Yeah, 93% sleep resistance, so one more elf should do it. Fire resistance, I'd say we're lagging a bit. I think normally, normally it's higher. Um, by, this, by this point in the game, but we'll get there. And it's not terribly important until we get him. I always forget that the monster wake up doesn't give alignment. So I was trying to remember if red nagas would be peaceful to waffles or not. I want to say no, that they're chaotic. I'm not certain though. Oops. Um, well, if I'm satiated and since I'm at full health, let's do some spell practice. Or full mana. Full power. Whatever you want to call it. Actually, I should probably be training attack spells now that I mention it. I was casting my healing spell first. Um, but 
currently the only healing spell I have. I have no issue casting, at least without my shield. And with my shield on, I don't think it matters whether I have skills higher or not. Uh, meanwhile, magic missile is not at 0% fail quite yet, even without my shield, so... Interesting, we've got one peaceful black naga and one not so peaceful black naga. The Naga just hit the other Naga with some venom. And apparently they're immune, which, I mean, I guess does make a certain... I mean, it makes a certain amount of game sense. Of course, monsters are immune to their own attacks, but... I didn't even know it was possible to be immune to that. Forgot to kick the food ration loose, but whatever. I have more where that came from. Okay, let's just wield Sting for the fun of it, even though it's absolutely not the most efficient move. That's two levels down, no problems. Ooh, and this is a fairly simple level. Shouldn't have problems with it. I say as I immediately have problems with it. Screwed that one out. I don't think I can recover from this without breaking a boulder somewhere. There are spare boulders, so maybe I can get away with just moving it to the side. Actually, I might be able to, yeah. I'll just jam it in the corner. Okay. I think we're good. And a likely useless wand. No, it's digging. I forgot that was a 150 circle. Okay, well, definitely good to have. So yeah, in terms of the Sokoban Prize, I'm going for the Amulet. And then, what else do I need to do? I need to forge an Athame so I can make use of Elbereth if necessary. Which currently I don't know, but I will learn it on Sokoban 4. Um, and... I might do some sack festing with that bag of tricks. I'm not certain about that though. Um, I was going. To, I was planning on holding off till getting to level 12, because my chances of getting an artifact would go up at that point um, to like about one in three. Currently, they are less than that. It's like one in five, something. Um, so that's like pretty small. And with my gauntlets of protection, that's pretty much all the non-artifact gifts I really care about. I mean, I guess I could use like a helm of speed. I wouldn't say no to that. Or any helm. Okay, maybe I will sacrifice. Uh, oh, that was the other thing I was thinking about doing on the level below. I couldn't remember what it was. I was thinking about going down to the zoo and killing that elven noble. So I guess I should get around doing that too. Or royal, rather. Because... They may have a hat. We all love hats, don't we? We not love mummies. But at least no mummies aren't so bad. And let's just kick the wrapping out of the doorway in case we need to shut that door for whatever reason. 
Ooh, and a classic vanilla level four. Oh, first let's see what's in the zoo. We've got ourselves an elf. Love it. Where jackal is not quite as fun. Cockatrice, gotta watch out for that. And I think we've got the one peaceful hobbit. So I think only one peaceful animal in the zoo. Easy to keep track of. Yeah, I think we can handle this. Um, I'm gonna have to cheat for the first part of this too, I think. This is much easier with PTY because they can have it up next to the um, web browser window with the wiki. I have to keep switching back and forth with the cursors because it's taking up my whole screen. But what a beautiful large screen it is. It's so much information. I'm getting more used to it. At the beginning I was kind of having trouble focusing on the actual dungeon map area because there's just there's so much other information around it. So I'd be like running into floating eyes, stupid stuff like that because I just didn't see them. <laughs> um, but I'm starting to acclimate. Ooh! Uh, last some more fire resistance. Another problem with switching back and forth is it really breaks my flow of where I am, so there's a chance I'll skip over a couple of boulder moves and then that screws me over. I think we got a handle on it though. It's all the way down and then right. It's still not a unicorn horn. Hmm. Well, I'm certainly not going to attack a peaceful unicorn. That would be just silly. But if I happen to find a decent pet, I might stick it on the unicorn on the altar level. Even though it can be nice to keep them around to throw gems at. I just, I don't know. I really need a unicorn horn. Okay, let's go to the Atlas so I don't have to worry about. Oh, I do have to worry about because I forgot that the spears are still covered. Well, that's how it goes, I guess. Um, let's get the, the dwarf get out of the way. Okay. Um, at least the spears are getting kicked into the holes just fine. Ooh. How many spears did I kick through the hole, though? Uh, oh, shoot. I guess there's a potion that got dropped with the Mimic. There's nothing I could have done about that, though. Not really. I guess I could have learned, I could have gotten the mimic's attention with a ranged throw and then lured it off of the hole. Oh well. Can something fall under a boulder? Or did it fall two levels, maybe? Here. 
six sphere, sorry. Okay. Um, not under there. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, mystery solved. And this centaur was kind enough to return it to us. Gear on it though, that seems a little unusual to me. Regardless, back in action. One nice thing about having done Mines Town or Mines End first is that, uh, well, having Luckstone is nice and I have decent luck after the altar sacrificing too. Um, but I'm also higher level than normal. Actually, I'm probably about normal level, but I have better gear than normal. So I'm feeling very comfortable with just taking on the zoo once I finish this level. Or I finish this puzzle. Um, oh. Speaking of which, I should just quaff this object detection potion now. Oh, I've been screwing up with naming and calling again. Hmm. Regardless. Okay. We have our target. Middle door. Um, seems like there's also some other objects being carried by monsters. I saw a dwarf lord wandering around. I think it was peaceful. I didn't check, but they usually are for lawfuls. So I don't think I'm getting that. Mm. But we'll see. There's something about this level that really appeals to me. I think it's just kind of like the orderliness of it. You've got all these rows of boulders and you're following similar strategies for each row. I also like the way that like, I mean for all the Sugabon levels, I think it's neat how just like one extra square somewhere can make all the difference for how the puzzle is solved. Or one extra row of squares. Um, I do think it's a neat puzzle game, so I tend not to engage with it particularly strongly while I'm playing NetHack, because um, it's not what I'm here for. I'm here to punch monsters in the face with a spear. Oh, hungry again. Um, huh, I actually don't have any food rations on me. In general, there were fewer food rations around than I expected, I think. Well, I saw that lichen corpse I can use. This black knife is peaceful, which is a pain. I have to corral it out of this long corridor. And then hope it stays out, which is a tall order. We'll see. And first, let's just. Make sure there's nothing under those boulders, because I don't think I'm moving yet. Ooh. Honey badger. Well, it'll be lying straight for me. So, 
not an issue. I could probably have taken it out from range, but there's always a chance that my spears wouldn't have killed it. Well, the chance that my spears wouldn't have killed it and my Aklas wouldn't have been able to do the job before failing to return our very slim. Better safe than sorry. At least the Naga is minding its own business. Okay, here we go. I hope, and on some level, I kind of hope this dwarf is peaceful. It does seem to be slow monster, decent, I guess. Because um, I can use it as a kind of escape option. Whenever I'm feeling harried, I can just swap places and the monsters can't reach me anymore. I think it's actually a good thing to be hungry when I'm facing the zoo, because if there's anything, um, any corpses I want to eat, I'll be well prepared. Ooh. I think I should take care of this flind, but I prefer to do it from, at least start from range. So I'm going to wait. Oh, and I have a cockatrice too. And a scroll scare monster. When does that happen? Lovely. Um, I promise I will not drop you on the floor this time. <laughs> okay, first things first. The flynn, I would like to take care of the cockatrice at range too. I still don't have a way to speed myself up again other than highly unreliable prayer if I get stoned and lose my speed. Mm, dragon hide armor, of course. Can't wear that. Helmet's rigid, so I can't wear that. Nothing in except the elf, the grants, intrinsic I, intrinsics that I care about. Be hungry, I'm satisfied with. Oh, crossbow bolts of frost, lovely. Of course, they're all getting shot, which is a bit less than ideal. Okay, now it's a race with the centaur to get to. good crossbow bolts before I start using them. Oh, and wands are going in the bag because we've got ourselves an energy vortex. Absolutely not a concern for us because we are totally electricity resistant, but it could potentially screw up our wands. gloves on. A lot of things indeed. So there are ruined areas of venom. Not terribly exciting because they're wooden so I can't forge with them. jumping range before they decide to actually jump at me? Apparently the answer is yes. Okay. Here it comes. Well, I guess threes are pretty nutritious. Didn't know that. Well, they have magical breathing on, so what do I care? So 
So all my spears. No. Keep on forgetting about that. Alrighty. Sleep resistance in full. Still no hat. Bah. And so far I've only found one copper crossbow bolt of frost, which is useless. I'm still hoping I can find oh, I should put this cockatrice in my bag. There's trouble in open inventory. It might be that some of these crossbow bolts a hat! Yes! It's happened! Um I think I'm just gonna put that sucker on straight away. I don't really care if it's cursed. I want it for the protection, the uh, bite protection. Not um, the AC. The zero. Okay, it wasn't even cursed. Lovely. Um, oh, and there's all the crossbow bolts of frost. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I think I might make a silver spear of frost. My earliest opportunity. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, another option would be a silver trident of frost. Because that I could actually two weapon with. I might do that instead. We'll see. Um, but I'm pretty sure I have the materials to make either of those if I want to. Well, gargoyle writing something. Okay, it's a roth, so whatever. Would have been much scarier if it was writing something fast. Okay. Back experience level 11. Oh, that's not fun. Okay. Dead. And we're left alone with the molds, which pose no threat to us for multiple reasons. They can't attack us for one. Two on cold resistance, that always helps. Not wielding any potions already. You're carrying any potions in open inventory? Okay. Um, just final assessment to where we are at. And yeah, we're going for the amulet. Magic resistance, it's gold, so that sucks. Uh, but I'm glad we have magic resistance. My amulet letters aren't particularly codified. My main one, which is usually magic resistance, sometimes flying or life saving, goes in L, and then the other is just J, K out from there. Well, H is reserved for scary, scaring um, items, but usually I don't have more than three amulets here to care about anyway. Alrighty. Well, with ref um, magic resistance, reflection is a bit less of a concern for me. I don't have to worry about random ones of death, just disintegration rays. Um, I might switch to dual wielding. I think I'll end this video here, and next time we will do some sacrificing, um, do some forging of yet to be determined weapons. I'm currently leaning towards a silver trident of frost. Um, if we find some mithril stuff, then mithril stout spear of fire sounds solid. Maybe a trident, I don't know. Uh, and we'll see where we go from there.